Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 10th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Unlike most people, we really like it if our readers and listeners are sending us a malware. Latest example is David. He sent us a very sort of classic uh, Word document, claimed to be a UPS invoice, but of course the macro in the Word document turned out to be malicious. Xavier took a quick look at it and you can read more about his analysis. Uh, what I sort of found interesting is from sort of a detection point of view is that it uses a very obviously fake user agent for some of its HTTP requests. Just a sequence of seven capital letters. Looks sort of random to me. Not sure where they come from, but I wouldn't be surprised if they change from infection to infection. Also, the server that uh, these requests are being sent to responds with the server header cowboy, which is also somewhat unusual. So these are typical anomalies to look for. User agent headers, server headers should be pretty easy to spot malware like this. And it's a renewed effort in finally getting rid of the SHA-1 algorithm to sign digital documents. The latest uh, output of this effort is that GNU-PG, probably the most popular implementation of GPG, will no longer trust SHA-1-based signatures if they were created after January 19th last year. What this means for you is, well, double check your software that it's not using SHA-1 signatures. As of course, uh, they may fail if someone uses up-to-date software to verify them. In particular, GNU-PG version 1.4 does default to SHA-1, so make sure you're no longer using that. And Cisco released 14 security updates, none of them critical, uh, two rated high, the rest uh, medium. What's sort of a little bit notable here is that many of these vulnerabilities are cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. They're actually often underestimated, so be careful. Uh, definitely patch this. Now, the two that are rated high are a command injection vulnerability in the WebEx video mesh node. Now, command injection, of course, sounds critical, but in order to exploit this, you have to have administrative access. So that uh, should mitigate the problem here somewhat. The second high one is a cross-site request forgery vulnerability in Cisco IOS and Cisco IOS XE software. As usual, if you can, do not expose uh, the these web admin interfaces, of course, in particular cross-site request forger vulnerabilities may be used by third parties to trick you into performing actions on these devices that you have access to, so the attacker does not necessarily need direct access. And then a couple of clarifications based on user feedback. First of all, the buskill USB switch that I talked about, it's actually not necessarily designed to erase your laptop, but more to lock your laptop if it's uh, being moved or to log out. The user there are different operating modes here. Secondly, regarding Google's Project Zero Disclosure Policy, yes, 90 days is the default, but Google may release uh, details earlier if the vulnerability is actively exploited or if uh, the software company that uh, actually has to fix uh, the issue agrees to have it published earlier. And well, today I have a special Friday interview again, and I want to talk uh, today with Mandy Galanti about a really sort of interesting initiative, uh, Girls Go Cyber Start. It's one of those games. Remember, we had uh, like at SCOTUS last week talk about sort of the more pro version with the Holiday Hack Channel challenge. The Girls Go Cyber Start uh, initiative is really more targeting high school uh, girls and well during January they sort of have their hot phase where uh, they try to get uh, students to sign up and 
and where also the first phase of uh, the competition starts. So, uh, Mandy, can you tell us a little bit about uh, this initiative? CyberStart in general is a effort from SANS to make an impact on the cyber workforce by bringing some really cool gamified environments to spark interest in cybersecurity at the high school level and at the college level. So what we're focusing on right now is a program called Girls Go CyberStart, which is we're in our third year. It's really exciting. And we are trying to, um, to get out the word that girls from ages 13 to 18 who are enrolled in a high school should come to Girls Go Cyber Start and see if they've got a talent, if they've got an interest, and just play some really fun games that have to do with cybersecurity. Just open up a whole new world for them. So that's really great. Uh, Last week, I was talking to Ed about his Holiday Hack channel. And of course, that's a little bit more sort of to professionals that already are in the business. You're really targeting more the high school kids, or and really trying to get people more interested into cybersecurity or should they already know anything about cybersecurity before they get started? That is such a great question. They don't need to know anything about it. And as a matter of fact, uh, the people who are already interested in cybersecurity are probably already playing those games, maybe not Holiday Hack Challenge, but they're out there playing um, and, and then engaging in Capture the Flags. What we realize is that as kids are growing up, they think, what do I want to be? I want to be a policeman. I want to be an engineer. They think of career fields that they've come into contact with, that they've seen on TV. They haven't really heard about cybersecurity. So we're trying to expand that knowledge base is to say, give it a try. You probably haven't heard about it, uh, but if you try it, you might like it. And if they see it on TV, it's usually the hacker with the hoodie kind of kind of. (laughs) I, uh, when I talked to Alan about this project, he actually told me that one of the things that he thought was very exciting was that a lot of times uh, you have kids join this game that really didn't know that they were good at solving these challenges. Yeah, it's actually a big surprise to a lot of students, students who might have tried a computer science class and and maybe they don't really have a programming um, excitement. But cybersecurity is about so much more than programming, about software development. It's everything from social engineering to cryptography. We find students are very engaged in some of the crypto puzzles or maybe they, you know, the idea is that this is a game. You're supposed to be a cyber agent. And you are going to find the bad guy. You're going to find the Mr. Robot. And you're going to find evidence that might uh, solve a crime. It puts a story into the concept of cybersecurity so the student can picture themselves and they can see that they're successful. And, you know, who doesn't like a little confetti and a U1 uh, screen popping up? So all of those things give a completely new student a surprise that they're good at something new. That's really exciting. Like I always tell my students that defenders don't get rewards. I guess they still get rewards when they're playing Cyber Star. (laughs) Exactly. In fact, as a matter of fact, there's actually some rewards across the board because this is a competition, right? This is this is a way to engage students to try something new. And one of the ways we do that is with prizes. So we have prizes for schools that register um, because we want them to fund more STEM programs so they can win even a thousand dollars for their school to fund something exciting like a field trip or some new equipment, maybe Raspberry Pis. And then we also have cash prizes for the girls later on when they compete in the final national championship. So it's not just a little bit of confetti in the gamified environment. It's also a chance for you to be recognized by even the governor of your state for trying something new and achieving. So that's really exciting. So how do students sign up for this or do they have to talk to a teacher or sort of how do they get started with it? So they actually do need a teacher to create a club. They go to girlsgocyberstart.org, the teacher would go, or the student can go and recommend their teacher um, get an email saying, I want a Girls Go Cyber Start club. So that's our starting point. You go to girlsgocyberstart.org and you register. Registration is open right now and the actual play starts on January 13th and the first stage goes until January 31st. So the teacher creates a club. She sends out a code to girls who'd like to register in her school, and the girls start playing and solving challenges. The important thing is that the school needs five girls to solve five of the 15 challenges. When they meet that qualifying mark, then that means the school will get 40 licenses to play CyberStart game. 
Now, CyberStart Game has over 250 cybersecurity challenges in this really fun gamified environment. And that's when we get the chance to let boys play. So it is called Girls Go CyberStart. But when the girls will win that qualifying stage, they actually win a prize that makes it possible for boys to learn cybersecurity and to participate. Now, keep in mind, it's the girls who are winning the prizes, but everybody wins when the whole classroom can participate in learning. That's really exciting. So thanks for joining me here. And uh, for all the listeners, you'll see links uh, to Girls Go Cyber Start in the show notes as well. That's it uh, for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.